So now we know a little bit about the the motion of the moon as it moves around the Earth, where we've tied the the phases of the moon um, with the with the tides um, and that sort of motion. Um, and we can now explore what happens when all three of these objects sort of come into alignment and mm. and what we what we call in in the modern times eclipses. Mm. Um, so what is an eclipse? Yeah, so there's a really great definition from the Merriam Mayer people in the East Torres Strait Islands. They describe a lunar eclipse as being Meb Dimdi. Now, this translates to a covered moon. And as we're about to find out, that's pretty much exactly what an eclipse is. It is a covered moon. Now, a lunar eclipse occurs when the moon moves in to the Earth's shadow. Uh, and of course, this Earth's shadow is produced by the sun as all of our shadows are produced. But this is something that can happen to, of course, both the moon and the sun if we're given the right alignment. Now, this alignment, of course, is called syzygy. Now, syzygy, it's a big word, uh, but it literally just means when things fall into that nice line that we're talking about. Yeah, and the, the Walpuri people, as well as the, the Yongnu people, uh, again, of, of the Northern Territory and East Arnhem Land, say that this solar eclipse occurs when the sun woman is being hidden by the moon man during a, a romantic embrace. Oh. Um, and the, uh, the Wurrungaroo people of South Australia, uh, they have a similar story where the shadow is providing privacy uh, for the moon man and the, and the sun woman in a similar way. Hmm, very considerate shadows we have here. <laughs> so very similar, our mob, the Gamilaroi people uh, in New South Wales and also the Walpuri people in Northern Territory, they say that the moon is being chased by the sun um, during their cycles and that when a lunar eclipse happen, that's specifically the point in time where the sun catches up to the moon. So I think it's time to take a little bit of a closer look at what's happening here. So we know that the, um, the moon is sort of moving around the Earth um, and that's what's creating the, the phases of the moon um, and, and all of that. Um, so what makes the, the eclipse so special? Why, why aren't these mm. things very common if the, the moon is just moving around the Earth every 28 days? Shouldn't we see one every month? Yeah. Yeah, that's a really great point and honestly something I've been confused about a lot in the past. So let's try and break it down. Eclipses specifically occur when the Earth and Sun move into this arrangement. Again, um, the name for that is syzygy. So here in this diagram, we can see uh, in the top, we have this solar eclipse alignment where the Sun uh, is uh, opposite to the Earth and the Moon is in the middle. Um, then during a lunar eclipse we have the Sun with the um, being opposite to the Moon with the Earth in the middle. And we know of course as you were saying this happens all the time. This happens every month. This is what gives us the Moon's phases. Why is this different? Well this is because of how the Moon and Sun are positioned with respect to the plane of the solar system. So if the Moon had the exact same orbit as the Sun, we actually would get eclipses every month. But that's not the case. Uh, you know, we're talking about these giant planetary bodies here, or stars um, in the Sun's case. Their orbits are slightly different, very, very slightly. Um, and this is what's making eclipses a little bit more rarer than say a full moon or a new moon. Now the moon has a slightly more angular orbit than the sun, meaning that it's sitting slightly off the plane at different times in its orbit. And that means that we're just not getting that, uh, that perfect alignment all the time. It only happens every, um, sometimes every couple of years, sometimes more frequently. This year we had 2021, we had two eclipses, we're very lucky, um, but sometimes we have to wait years for that. Um, so it's really about the planets aligning. <laughs> Yeah, so this makes, um, I guess, observations of these, particularly in traditional knowledge systems, quite special. And so exploring those ideas can, can really sort of benefit us in, in better understanding things like this. So in order to see one of these eclipses occur, 
something really um, quite remarkable about our, our positioning um, has to occur. Because from here on Earth, the uh, sun is about 400 times bigger than that of the moon, as you see it in the sky. But the moon is actually 400 times closer to us than the sun. And so that makes them actually appear almost equal in size as we see them here in, from Earth. Yeah, well, that's a little bit magical. Uh, so say if the moon was slightly further away from Earth or maybe the sun was slightly bigger, total eclipses just would not occur. Uh, so it's kind of special. It's kind of special here on Earth as well. Say if we were to stand on Saturn or Jupiter, we may have a completely different experience altogether. But I guess the point is we can't really stand on those planets. <laughs> we can stand on Earth and we do have this wonderful alignment that occurs all the time. Um, so I think Earth wins this one.